In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. From the God who is, who was, and who is to come at the end of the ages, grace and peace be with you all. Longing and awaiting the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in majesty and glory, let us ask God for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O God, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, Do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. 
Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Our psalm response is, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
with you and with your spirit. a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Glory to you, o Lord. the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David the virgin's name was Mary Upon arriving, the angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored daughter. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's words and wondered what his greeting meant. The angel went on to say to her, Do not fear, Mary. You have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bear a son and give him the name Jesus. Great will be his dignity, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will be without end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Hence the holy offspring to be born will be called Son of God. Know that Elizabeth, your kinswoman, has conceived a son in her old age. She who is thought to be barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you have said. With that, the angel departed. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you know what the talk is? If you are not a black parent, I don't expect you do. In his book, Between the World and Me, an extended letter to his black son, the author Tahisi Coates explains to his son how to live in his black body. The talk is when black parents teach their sons how to survive an encounter with the police. No sudden movements, no back talk, no excuse for a violent response. It is often given when boys are about 12. The talk is the natural byproduct of parental fear. In Coates' view, fear is the defining characteristic of black life. Fear of the state, fear of the police, fear of the ghetto. It is a simple fact of everyday life for black Americans. Having read the book and familiar with the term, I was then taken very much aback when my colleague and friend, Rabbi Greg Weitzman of Congregation Beth Emmeth, said he had given 
the talk to Jewish parents in his congregation who I expect are passing it on to their children. Why the talk among Jews? The Jewish community is afraid. The Jewish community feels alone. Anti-Semitism and violence are on the rise throughout the world again, including our own country. As we've seen with the shooting in front of Temple Israel a couple weeks ago. Anti-Semitism is stoked by political rhetoric that calls people vermin, and that their very presence among us is poisoning the blood of the nation. Language that dehumanizes people dangerously can lead to violence and spread to include other groups of people. Islamophobia is on the rise. Gay men and women have always had to play other parts. Anti-Semitism is being fueled by the Israeli-Hamas war, a very complex political and historical situation. we will hear in just a few hours the message of the angels. And on earth peace to those on whom God's favor rests. So the angel Gabriel said to Mary, on you God's favor rests. Now this song of the angels has been corrupted by advertisers and Hallmark. What do we normally hear? Peace on earth and goodwill to men. That's not the gospel. The peace of God that is offered can only be received by people of goodwill. It's peace on earth to those on whom God's favor rests and have goodwill. Do we therefore as Christians have the goodwill to have the talk with Jewish people so that peace may begin to come upon the earth. And what do I mean? For Christians, the talk means addressing hate speech and anti-Semitic ideas wherever, by whom, and whenever we encounter them, and it needs to be done immediately. And if we lose friends and family members, so be it. Talk means offering words of support to Jewish friends and neighbors. It may include, I don't understand, but I'll walk with you. The talk means calling a synagogue. Ohav Shalom, Temple Israel, Beth Emeth, Beth Avraham Yaakov. Identifying yourself as a Christian, and even if you're only talking to the secretary or administrator who answers the phone, to offer words of solidarity, to pass them on to the rabbi. The talk means attending Shabbat services, having the experience of Albany police outside a place of worship, sometimes having to go through security as if you are in an airport introducing yourself as a Christian who wants to be supportively present and thus identify with the Jewish people. The book of Ecclesiastes reminds us there is an appointed time for everything, a time to be silent and a time to speak. This is the time to speak. Martin Niemöller, a German Lutheran pastor, wrote the following after World War II. First they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me. 
and there was no one left to speak out for me. This is the time to speak out because there may come a time when there is no one to speak. I'm not one for attending rallies. I find rallies suspicious. Their purposes can be misunderstood. Their purposes can be taken over by a group that shows up. Yet I have attended one in support of the Jewish community here in Albany. I've been present for the beginning of Shabbat at Congregation Beth Emeth, as well as Temple Israel the night after the shooting on the front lawn of their synagogue. I've called Rabbi Daniel Ornstein of Ohav Shalom to voice my support, and I regularly speak with Greg, who often calls me to have someone to talk to. And so I encourage you to make some form of the talk with the Jewish community in our area. This is the time to speak. Do not wait. Do not put it off. Pope Pius XI said, spiritually we Christians are Semitic. Pope John XXIII greeted a delegation of American Jews with, I am Joseph, your brother. Pope John Paul II, in speaking to the Jewish community in Rome, one of the oldest communities in the world, said, you are our elder brothers. And in that same speech he noted the declaration of the Second Vatican Council, Nostra Aetate, which deplores the hatred persecutions and displays of anti-Semitism directed against the Jews at any time and by any one. John Paul went so far as to say that anti-Semitism is a sin, which means bigotry against any group of people is a sin. The Jewish community, therefore, is family. Outside our cathedral church is the sculpture called Portal by Robert Blood. Portals in science fiction take characters to other dimensions, parallel universes. After centuries of church-sponsored anti-Semitism, in the 80s, Rabbi Martin Silverman and Bishop Howard J. Hubbard led people from both faith communities through the portal to journey together from fear to friendship. What does friendship mean? Friendship means that the Jewish community should not feel alone in their present fear. And the only way they're going to know that is if we make ourselves present. Not one time being present at any of these synagogues did not someone eventually walk up to me and say, thank you for being here. Didn't speak, didn't say anything. I happen to know a little bit Hebrew. Most services are English and Hebrew. But that's not what they thanked me for. They thanked me for simply being present. Phone calls are good, letters to rabbis and congregations are good. Being at a rally is good that you get lost in the crowd. Sitting in a congregation for Shabbat says far more. It means we take a good amount of time. You complain about our Catholic liturgy. Trust me, theirs are longer. Why any of us complain about being in the presence of God, I've never known, but we do. Right now, I'm the only object between you and getting ready for your last Christmas preparations. And yet Christ is here. Who cares about baby Jesus? The Jews need our presence, which is the presence of Christ. 
And if the celebrations this year of Christmas are to have any depth of meaning, then we Christians need to reclaim the Jewishness of Jesus of Nazareth, his mother Miriam, and Yosef. And we do that through the Jewish community. All these figures here, except for the Magi, are Jews. The apostles up on the high altar are Jews. Our scriptures are Jewish. Our liturgy is Jewish. We are doing a synagogue service with Seder of Passover. Do we realize that? None of what we do is Christian. What we do is Jewish because we are spiritually Jews. We are related. We are bound at the hip as children of Avraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. And family needs us right now. Please, sometime in the next couple of weeks, have the talk with someone from the synagogues, with a friend or neighbor who you know is Jewish. If we do not speak out, there will be no one to speak out for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we wait in autumn's silent darkness and dream with the prophet Isaiah, let us pray and hope for the coming of our God. For the Spirit's gift of wonder that the church may embrace the dreams of Isaiah so as to live in the hope that God is present with us even in the conflicts and fears of our times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of joy, that, like the Virgin Mary, the Church may embrace the promise of a Savior in the poor, homeless, abandoned, and lonely in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of humility, that the Church may heed the call of John the Baptist and witness to Christ as the Messiah, by repenting and confessing our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Spirit's gift of patience, endurance, that the Church, like farmers and expectant parents, may see the birthing of a new world before our eyes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deepened trust that the Church may continue on the path toward Christian unity, and for the people, 
Dean and Clergy of the Cathedral of All Saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of accompaniment that the church may walk with those who mourn and together see our own hope of eternal life in our dead, including Arlene Triola, Thomas and Jane Lemmy, Ralph and Anne Lemmy, Joe Masioka, Robert J. and Robert M. Keegan, Robert and Catherine Frank, Dominic F. and Anna T. Allegretta, Frederick W. Bernacki, and Cheryl Bernacki Evola. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people and situations we hold deep in our hearts and bring to this holy table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the darkness of this season and of our lives, O God, you are our hope. May the light of your Son's resurrection dispel our fears and bring us into the fullness of your reign. We ask this through Emmanuel, God with us, who lives and reigns with you in the life-giving Spirit, our God, now and forever. Amen. As we prepare the Lord's table and ourselves to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us join in singing hymn number 47, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, number 47. Sisters and brothers, pray with me that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O God, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as the Spirit filled with power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, 
The virgin mother longed for him with a love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek you might find you. Time and again, you offered us covenants and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O God, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O God, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings us salvation to the whole world. Look, O God, upon the sacrifice which you have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one cup that, gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, O God, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servants Francis of Rome, Edward of Albany, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace to our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Christ be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Christ can be eternal life to us who receive it.
Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the Christ, who is to come at the end of the ages. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity. Through Christ our Lord. For many of us, we've already given in to Christmas, but I really encourage you to find some time between now and the setting of the sun to place aside a few minutes, 15 minutes, a half hour of quiet time of prayer. The Feast of Christmas is a sacred time. It's not the holidays. And unless we make that room, even in these last moments, so that Christ can enter, Find some silence, a quiet corner of the day in these last few hours of Advent that you may come to truly know the presence of the only begotten Son of God who has come to save us from our sins. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace and glorify God by your lives.